Hello, Mr. Maes is here, and today we are going to look at um, analyzing some characteristics of graphs. So we're going to look at this graph of y equals f of x, and we're just going to look at some defining characteristics of what's going on in this graph. Um, some of this is going to be new vocabulary, and that's really what we're trying to get to, is that you uh, get used to these terms and uh, understand where each of these are happening. Now, if you haven't done interval notation, uh, I suggest you go and take a look at a video on interval notation and uh, come back uh, because all of the stuff that I'm going to be doing is in interval notation, all the inequalities, okay? So a couple of things here, we've got this graph y equals f of x. A couple of things I want to show is we know that this graph crosses the x-axis at negative 3, negative 1, 2, and 4. And so these are called its x-intercepts. We also sometimes call these the zeros or roots. So they would be here and then at 2 and at 4. So those are the zeros of the function. Now the other couple of things that we can see here is that this graph comes to a peak, then comes down, then also comes back up, it comes up to another peak, and then comes down. These places where the peak happens, or down here where it bottoms out, comes up top, these are called extrema. And extrema, you could think of like an extreme, something being extreme, like the highest or the lowest. Even though this right here is not the lowest value of y for our function, because we can see this goes down forever in this direction, this goes down forever in this direction, this is still considered an extrema because it comes to, um, it comes, it goes down and then comes back up. And if we were looking at only this part of the graph, in this general area, this would be um, definitely the lowest part of the graph. So. This right here is called a relative minimum. And it's called a relative minimum. A minimum is any value, any part of the graph that goes down and then comes back up or is low enough to where it would be maybe the lowest y value. Um, even something that comes to maybe a corner, like in an absolute value, that would also be considered a minimum. So anything where we see that it changes, it either changes slope or um, the slope of the tangent line at that point is zero, uh, or it's an endpoint that is the endpoint that's the lowest value of y in our function would be a minimum. So this point right here, this is also a relative because this is higher than this value of y. So this would be a relative maximum. Well, it's relative because in this area, this is going to be the highest value of y. But in the entire graph, it's not the highest. It's, it's, it's maybe second or third or something. But it's not the highest. We have higher values, larger values of y. In this case, this value of y is the absolute largest value of y. There will be no y on this function that's bigger, that's greater than y equals 5. This is the absolute highest point. So if it's the absolute highest point, we call it the absolute maximum. So these are the maximums and minimums, the extrema sometimes called the local minimum, the local extrema, and de depending on what textbook you have, of this function y equals f of x. Okay, a couple other things that are interesting about this graph. We look at the general trend or the slope of the graph as it goes, it goes up. So this, this is kind of, if we do a tangent line right here, we would notice that that slope of the tangent line is positive. In fact, every tangent line that we draw on this part of the graph is going to have a positive slope. 
So when we have positive slope, we call this part of the graph increasing. So if the graph is increasing, it has positive slope. If it's decreasing, it would have negative slope. So let's take a look at this graph and label which ones, which part of this graph is increasing and which part of this graph is decreasing. So increasing. And I'm going to write this in, again, I'm going to write it in interval notation. So increasing values for this graph, we're going to look at the x values. So our, our intervals are going to be in terms of x. At this point, at x equals negative 2, our slope is 0. So it's not a positive slope. Everything less than negative 2 is a positive slope. So this graph, this function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 2. It's also increasing from 1 to 3. And those are the only places where the slope is positive. Remember, you're looking at maybe a tangent line to the curve and that slope being positive. So let's look at where it's decreasing. So now we're looking for a slope that's negative. A slope that's negative is here and here. So we've got from negative 2 to 1, we would have decreasing slope. So negative 2 to 1. And we also have decreasing slope from 3 to infinity. Sometimes the places that we see a change in slope from negative to positive, we call those critical points. Now, we've got one more part of this graph that we want to talk about, and that's talking about concavity. And what concavity is, is we're looking for the areas of this graph that are concave up. Concave up is like a bowl. Okay, that's concave up. Concave down like this, it's like a hat. So you put a hat on, that's concave down. You have a bowl, that's concave up. So we're looking at this part where it looks like it goes from concave up, concave down, and we want to label those. So let's look at concave up. Concave up again is a bowl, so we're looking for something like this. So the point at which it changes from concave up to concave down is called the inflection point. Now we're just going to estimate those here because we don't have, we need a little bit of calculus to actually find the inflection point, but we're just going to estimate so that we can write these intervals here. So notice that this graph, this graph goes down like this. So it's like the hat, that's concave down. It starts to change concavity probably somewhere, well, well just because we're, we're estimating, we're going to go ahead and say at one. It changes from being concave down to concave up. So concave up would start at 1, and we'll go ahead and say that it changes concavity at 2. It probably more likely changes somewhere between 2 and 3, somewhere up here. It goes from concave up to starting to go concave down. But just for simplicity, we'll say between 1 and 2, this is concave up. So concave up between 1 and 2. Concave down would be where the graph goes down this way, down this way. So from 1 to negative infinity, this is always going to be concave down. And from 2 to positive infinity, this is always going to be concave down. So we've got negative infinity to 1 and 2 to infinity. 
Okay, so these are some major parts of a graph that we're going to need to, to make sure that we understand the vocabulary, being able to see where the slope is positive, where we have an increasing and decreasing function, and where the concavity is concave up or concave down. Okay, that's it for this time. We'll see you soon. Bye.